Hello, welcome to another pen talk. This is uh, the third one I've done in, in the same amount of days. I get motivated. Um, as usual, this is um, a subject I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, just needed to get the right context and uh, <clears throat> get motivated. So after doing Eversharps and, and Wasps and looking at the fountain pen environment in the 20s and 30s and into the 40s, I decided to take a review of some of the kind of interesting, unique, um, rare pens that I have uh, in my collection. And also these all have eye appeal of, of some level, so I uh, thought that would be nice. And we got some afternoon sun, so that should bring out the detail pretty nicely. I want to give a shout out to Richard Binder's site. I mean, a lot of the information that I'm going to convey about these pens uh, came from his site. Um, I supplemented as much as I could, but it's hard to find information that he hasn't already compiled and put together. So if you find a pen you're interested in figuring out uh, more about it, uh, please uh, check out his site. I'll put a link um, in my uh, video description. So first we're going to start off with this pen which is a Uniflow pen by the Universal Pen Company. To move this a little bit so it can stay in the sunlight. Uh, this pen is mint in box. I have cleaned it up to make it uh, look more presentable. Uh, the Universal Pen Company, not a lot of information on them. This pen is probably from the late 30s. I'll show what this uh, pamphlet looks like. I don't want to unfold it a lot because it's uh, fragile from age. You can see it has the original sticker on it. It was uh, $3.35. It's a pretty pen. It's very nicely made. I like the way the clip has some uh, interesting patterns to it, kind of reminiscent of uh, Parker's. If we take off uh, the cap, we can see it has a really nice 14 karat nib on it, just a generic nib uh, made in USA and, and your classic cone feed. So again, the, the plastic and resin in this is just unique. At least uh, we're going to call it unique until we take a look at the next pen in, in the collection. Similar resin. Um, a little bit different in the way it's shaped. Obviously this pen I don't think had the same level quality put into it. This is uh, an Eagle pen. Uh, Eagle was, um, I gotta check my notes here. The Eagle Pen Company uh, came out of the 30s, New York City company. Uh, it was founded by a German family. Uh, so uh, I really enjoy this pen. I like the Art Deco decoration in the band there. That's, that's kind of a nice little touch. Um, if we open it up, we'll see it just has an Iridium nib on it, but it says EPNCO for Eagle Pen Company. And it's nice at the clear section here for seeing the, your level of ink. So following on the theme of a striped pen, uh, we're gonna bring up another one uh, called the Majestic. As you can see, we're probably going down in quality. Um, this one, uh, the parts, I don't know whether they ever played it or not, but whatever it is, they're pretty much raw metal. Uh, Majestic, um, also in New York City, uh, was a brand by J. Harrison Company. So uh, they did a few pens. Here's another one I had from my collection. Uh, again, unique, unique design, unique look, uh, certainly not high quality. Um, I did, you know, polish these up and make them look nice and presentable. Jay Harris also, um, like many of the small pen manufacturers, had a number of different pens in their brand. So this is Ambassador. And what I think is interesting is they've also taken the effort of putting the name on the lever. Uh, a very unique acrylic. Um, you know, not a lot of... Uh, you know, costly uh, design in this pen, just very straight. As we uncap it, uh, we'll see. Uh, one of the things that seems to be common in some of these lower end pens is it's a 14 karat nib. 
it's a warranted nib so that's like I say it's a generic nib but um, still uh, an interesting pen. We're going to make a little bit of a detour here and this is uh, <clears throat> diamond metal diamond me metal <laughs> sorry I cannot pronounce it uh, again nice acrylic um, nice look a little bit of discoloration this pen is also from the 30s uh, but what makes this pen unique is this is a Sears and Roebuck house brand pen so uh, think about it as a generic pen that Sears and Roebuck had somebody make for them uh, unscrew the cap uh, the threads are, are not too many left as you can see this also has an 18 karat gold nib in it um, and it says uh, diamond on it so that's really nice it uh, it was engraved with the manufacturer's name now we're going to just make another little interesting detour is we're going to look at this thing called a Maxton uh, has kind of a you know a dual fold uh, <clears throat> you know red look to it uh, interesting that uh, the lever just has some embossment in it uh, pen is nice has good weight to it as we uncap it uh, you notice it has a nice again gold nib a generic gold nib nice section here so the pen is actually I think a good size it'll give the big red dual fold a run for its money and probably cost um, much much less in price so after the uh, boring red pen we're going to go to a Waltham and this I have to say is a very unique plastic very unique colors this is something I'm certain when you uh, take this out to write with it people are going to notice it I also like uh, the detail in in the clip but that's about the only detail on the pen so we uncap it um, you will see the nibs in bad shape it's a steel nib it's fairly corroded um, I haven't decided what I want to do with this pen um, I may find a, another nib for it I have a number of different nibs I can put on it now taking to the vein of being over the top resins and plastics uh, we have two no-name pens I mean I'm talking no name nothing on these whatsoever but this is just a very unique resin I just uh, can't uh, take my eyes off of it and here's a similar one but a different color scheme but also a generic pen this one has a metal band here in the cap this one doesn't so not a lot of similarities except they're just plain if we uncap these we'll notice that one does have a gold nib and the other one just has uh, a, a nice uh, steel nib on them I haven't decided also what I'm going to do with these long term, but uh, I certainly look at them uh, regularly and enjoy uh, their look. Now we're going to go back to a, a pen which some of you may have uh, actually had some experience with. This is a uh, Salts pen. Uh, one of the things that's common is a lot of these pens were uh, family companies. So the Salts brothers in New York City were back in New York City again. Uh, made a lot of different pens I just find this one unique because of the resins and the colors and the facets in the pen kind of like a Doric type of look a lot of the mid-tier ones did uh, try to emulate uh, some of the more popular expensive pens uh, when you uncap it you'll notice it has a really small nib really small section wouldn't really call it at much of a functional pen so t going back to something a little bit more traditional we have a marathon pen another um, New York City manufacturer and I just think it's nice to see that they use this uh, green resin plastic kind of similar to what you'll find in um, Parker's and Schaefer's of the day uh, very well made pen feels good feels nice in the hand again very simply made uh, you know they put uh, their effort into stampings on the on the clip Uncapping is nice. The threads work really well. It posts well. Um, it also has a uh, 14 karat nib in it, but it's a generic nib as we see in many of them. Kind of small section, but I just like the pen. Um, kind of stands out and uh, maybe we'll start writing with it someday. 
Now we're going to make another little transition here to, this is a, as you can see, the uh, company name is engraved into the pen. Um, so this is an Ingersoll, and as we take a look at it again, this is a mint pen, and it's a, a dollar pen. Uh, there's a patent uh, applied for on the clip, kind of a unique clip design there. Uh, nice pattern in the plastic. This has a knob that you turn that, uh, you know, twists and squeezes the sack. Uh, I haven't done anything to write with this pen, but if you open it up, you'll notice everything is metal on it, which is nice. And it does have a 14 karat nib. And for a dollar for a pen back in the 30s with a 14 karat nib, uh, that was quite a unique uh, accomplishment. Now, last but not least, we have what I would call um, a mystery pen. So uh, you'll notice on the, on the clip that it's a you, yours truly pen. It's just a classic hard rubber pen that, you know, kind of mimics something you might see from Waterman or, or Schaefer in the day. Um, again, it's yours truly is engraved on the barrel, but also engraved there is M. Ratner and Son Pen Company, New York. So again, another New York company, uh, probably family owned based on uh, how that engraving goes. And it's also nice that they engraved uh, the lever on the barrel too. It's just an unscrew cap. It, it posts fine, a little bit long, and again, it has a nice uh, gold point on it. Uh, you know, decent section, kind of like a Waterman uh, 52 pen. Now, one of the deficits on this pen is the uh, cap that screws into the top um, is gone. I'm thinking it uh, might be able to find one. I haven't spent a lot of time looking for one. I'm certain I could find a, a, some parts in my Parker bin that, that would fit that. So hopefully you enjoyed that little uh, look at uh, a number of variety of pens. Uh, hopefully you found some of them quite interesting. And to me, it's just amazing the variety of pens that were made. Uh, can you imagine what it was like back in the 20s and 30s and 40s walking into a drugstore or Sears and Roebuck? Uh, and finding um, a shelf of pens uh, to buy. And they were all a couple dollars, which was not an insignificant amount of money back in those days, but certainly uh, something people prided in, in having uh, a pen that they enjoyed writing with and, and hopefully enjoyed looking at. So that's, uh, that's a little quick uh, drive-by there. Um, no writing here. I may start writing with these later, but I just wanted to really do the eye candy uh, uh, look at these. Uh, so enjoy uh, your writing experiences. Uh, see you later. Bye.